So when we were developing our thrombolysis pathway, the crucial thing was to determine what are the things that we actually need to do to deliver this treatment safely and eliminate everything else from the pathway. The first thing we did was we arranged for the switchboard to be able to put out a special bleep call for the stroke team, which says blue call for stroke team, estimated arrival time, and then however minutes it's going to be, and the team then prepare and go down to A&E to meet the ambulance as they come in the front door. And our, our core stroke team is a band six nurse and one of our clinical fellows who are usually at a senior house officer grade, so they're not specialist registrars. They will then wait by the front door, they check over the equipment, make sure everything is ready to receive the patient. And when the, the patient comes in with the ambulance, they take them straight away to one of our resuscitation bays, which is fully equipped for uh, dealing with strokes. One of the ambulance staff then has to go immediately and register the patient on the hospital system so that we can request blood tests and scans for them. The other ambulance member of staff then hands over the details of that patient's presentation to the stroke team. Once we've got the history from the ambulance staff, we then take the history from the patient. Now the crucial thing is that when somebody comes in with a stroke, what you actually want is to be able to take a history from the patient or from their family as to what's happened and to do a, a comprehensive neurological examination to determine whether they've actually had a stroke. And at the end of that time, the diagnosis of stroke should be clear, should be yes or no. So we'll then uh, place a cannula in one arm, we take a blood sample, we don't usually wait for the results of the blood test, but we always check a blood sugar first. And if a patient is on warfarin, we will always do a, a, a local patient testing INR test, which is the test you do for warfarin, uh, to make sure that the patient is safe to thrombolyze. The next crucial step is to get a CT scan, because the CT scan will rule out hemorrhage, which is a contraindication to thrombolysis, any other diagnoses that we haven't thought of, like brain tumours, and also we'll look to see whether there are signs that this might be a very large stroke, because in a very large stroke, thrombolysis can also be dangerous. As soon as the scan is on the, uh, on the screen and the radiologist has reported the scan, we then communicate with the consultant and say, look, this is the patient, this is their medical history, this is what we find on examination. We've gone through the lists of contraindications to thrombolysis, Here's the scan report, this is what we're seeing on the scan, and the consultant can then make a decision, usually in a few minutes, by asking one or two questions to clarify various points that they're, they're unsure about. The correct dose of drug is then drawn up, subject to all the forms being correctly filled in, and the consultant giving the say-so, we then give that bolus injection, which is the start of the treatment. As soon as that bolus injection is given, the nurse will make up the rest of the dose, which is given as an infusion over an hour, once the infusion has started and the patient is stable, we then try and take them up to the ward as quickly as possible. Then they go onto a cardiac monitor and they're monitored with a careful protocol of blood pressure, pulse and uh, temperature and observations uh, for the next 24 hours.